For the past year and a half, I've been making video games in the Unity game engine. And if you want to get started with game dev, it's easier than ever and you've come to the right place. If you're watching this video, you might have an idea for a game you really want to make or play, but you can't make it until you have chosen a game engine or a framework. My personal choice is Unity Game Engine, but around 4 months after I started using it, they made terrible pricing changes which made more than 20% of their devs switch to Godot or Unreal. So I recommend that as a beginner, you choose Godot if you want a game engine, but if you want a framework, Pygame is great. The thing about Godot and Pygame is that they use Python. Well, Godot uses GDScript, but close enough. I have never really used Python, but apparently it's really simple, which is why you should choose something that uses Python. Really quick though, if you're not a fan of coding, and you don't really care about making money, you should use Scratch MIT. There's one thing you need to be aware of. The two major traps that all beginners fall into. Number one, the dream game syndrome. Everybody has a dream game, but if you really want to make that game someday, you have to avoid it while you're still learning your game. My suggestion is, make Flappy Bird. It doesn't matter if you make a few clone games while you're getting started, but you can't use tutorials forever, which takes us directly into our next trap. Number two, tutorial hell. I've been there before. Learning to code is not easy, but you can't always have people telling you how to do everything. Otherwise, you aren't learning. Don't get me wrong, it's hard to learn a programming language, but there are many helpful courses to teach you how they work. Now on to the next big thing. It's okay to give up on a project. I even did this with a game I had already made three devlogs on. It's called Turquoise Legends, and the reason? Scope Greek. That is something you want to avoid, but if you want to learn more about it, watch this video in the top card up here. Giving up on a project is something all game devs do, and it's completely fine. Just don't make devlogs on something you aren't entirely into. If you want to learn how to make a game dev channel, comment down below, but back to how to get started. After you have used your game engine or framework for a while, you probably should start trying to promote your game unless you are doing it for fun. How do you promote? That's for you to decide, but I recommend YouTube. One, I use it to promote, and two, millions of people will subscribe to you if you make quality content. If you want to learn how to start game dev channel, I have three tips. One, you can't be shy. You've got to make sure to talk loud and enthusiastically while recording your scripts, or you aren't going to get any likes and subs. And also, use a microphone. There are many quality mics at low prices, so don't think you have to buy a $5 million one. Number two, engage with your audience. What I mean by this is you need to respond to comments and make community posts. I think I have more of those in videos. Maybe I should fix that. Number three, upload consistently. I know you want to upload every day, but if you want to make quality content, it's going to take a few days or even a few weeks to make videos. But that doesn't mean you can't ever upload. Enough about promotion. Next big thing is, what do you do if you get stuck? Tutorials are always out there. If you only use tutorials for things you can't figure out no matter how hard you try, you won't get stuck in tutorial hell. Even I still sometimes use tutorials. Like for this transition in my GMTK 2024 jam game Workbench Wanderers, and this wall jumping mechanic for my main game Wildberry. So if you get stuck, just look up tutorials. But not for everything. Again, if you watch Bracky's tutorials for everything, you will fall into the biggest game dev trap. And after you've gotten the hang of your tool, you you can no longer really fall into the dream game trap. So I'm gonna say that you should make your dream game. No matter what your skill level is, just if you have a pretty good understanding of how to make a simple clone game, make that game.